According to a new study, their new machine learning system is starting to resemble human cognition. In recent years, artificial intelligence powered by machine learning has made significant progress, particularly in the field of visual identification. Face recognition algorithms from companies like Clearview help law enforcement agencies match images on social media with the help of their new AI models to those in government databases to identify wanted individuals. Instagram uses image recognition to describe photos for the visually impaired, Google uses it for its reverse image search function, and facial recognition algorithms from companies like Clearview help law enforcement agencies match images on social media to those in government databases to identify wanted individuals. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you this insane new proposal which is meant to bridge the gap between our brain's ability to adapt and artificial intelligence's amazing consistency, how neurosciences helps making this a reality, and finally, what new applications will result from these advancements. Two interviews with Noam Chomsky and Steven Pinker, two of the world's best linguistic and cognitive scientists, were published in 2019 by the MIT Press Reader. The way the men frame and address significant issues around their areas of expertise varies, much like the men themselves. When questioned about machine learning and its contributions to cognitive science, however, their responses are characterized by skepticism and disillusionment. In almost every significant way, it's difficult to understand how machine learning contributes to science in any way. Specifically, whatever benefit cognitive science may have in terms of building usable gadgets or examining the features of the computing processes being used. Positions like these, however, may soon find themselves on shaky ground as our understanding of human and computer intelligence increases. While AI has yet to achieve human-like cognition, artificial neural networks that mimic language processing a system regarded to be a fundamental component of higher cognition, are beginning to resemble what we observe in the brain. A group of MIT researchers released a paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in November suggesting that examining machine learning patterns can give a window into these higher cognitive brain function mechanisms. Even more astonishing is the study's conclusion that AI is evolving in lockstep with nature, without anybody training it to do so. Aside from important ethical debates, the mechanics of how these algorithms work might provide information on cognitive function. Researchers can gain insight into which programs work best and which most closely resemble how the brain performs the same task by comparing neural activity from humans and non-human primates to data from artificial neural network machine learning models tasked with a similar function, say, recognizing an image against a chaotic background by comparing neural activity from humans and non-human primates to data from artificial neural network machine learning models tasked with a similar function. Joshua Tenenbaum, a computational cognitive science instructor at MIT and a member of the Institute's Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, and Evelina Fedorenko, an associate professor of neuroscience at the university, co-authored the paper with Shrimp, a PhD student in the MIT Brain and Cognitive Sciences Department. Following these achievements, Martin began to question if the same idea might be applied to higher-level cognitive tasks such as language processing. Let's take a look at some effective neural networks to determine whether they're similar to the brain. My guess was that it would work, at least somewhat. Martin and colleagues analyzed data from 43 artificial neural network language models to fMRI and ECOG brain recordings collected while people listened to or read words from a text to find out. The AI models that the team looked at included all of the primary types of neural network techniques for language-based applications. Some were simpler embedding models, such as GLOVE, which put semantically comparable words into groups. These models have been trained to anticipate the next word in a sequence or to forecast a missing word in a certain context. Martin's favorite result is that some of the models are exceptionally good in predicting neural data. In other words, certain models appear to mimic the brain's cognitive mechanics for language processing, regardless of how successful they were at doing a task. Surprisingly, the GPT model versions were found to be the most brain-like of the group studied by the MIT researchers. GPT is a machine learning model that can produce any type of human language text. It was created by OpenAI, an AI research group founded by Elon Musk that just released a new AI tool capable of creating computer code in June. 
With almost 175 billion machine learning parameters, GPT-3, the program's most recent iteration, was the single biggest neural network ever developed until recently. This discovery may provide a significant insight into how the brain accomplishes at least some aspects of higher-level cognitive functions such as language comprehension. The GPT algorithm works by anticipating the next word in a series. The fact that it fits brain scan data so closely suggests that prediction is a crucial component of whatever the brain is doing with language processing. Schrempf also points out that in cases when respondents were offered longer texts and storylines, all neural network models performed badly in comparison to how they performed on short-range texts. This can be interpreted in a variety of ways. But the more intriguing interpretation, which I believe is also compatible with what machine learning is inferring right now, is that these models are particularly adept at building the appropriate short-range representations. However, once you have semantic context to aggregate across, this may be where they fall short. If you've ever played with one of these chatbots in your browser, you'll find something similar. It starts off okay but gradually breaks apart. The team's second key conclusion sheds light on how language affects human cognition, as they put diverse language activities to the test using a mix of eight distinct benchmarks that included grammaticality and judgment. More research is needed to determine why certain models match the brain more closely than others. This is partially due to the fact that AI models in machine learning may be akin to a black box, with functions so complex that even the individuals who built them may struggle to understand how the variables that go into the models are connected to one another. Martin admits that sorting out those factors might be a mammoth effort. The study's third important discovery, which is the one that most closely relates it to cognition theories, is that the more brain-like an AI model is, the more it can mimic human behavior, in this example, individual reading times. Putting the puzzle together exposes the triangle, an unexpected synthesis of scientific knowledge that Martin alludes to. Next word prediction models reflect the brain scores of individuals, which may then be utilized to predict human behavior. This triangle of insights is really interesting, in my opinion. We were able to bring everything together in one research now that we've learned lessons from eyesight in other domains. Models that anticipate the next word are better at predicting neural responses in human brains, and models that predict neural responses are better at predicting behavior in the form of self-paced reading durations. Schrempf and his colleagues are working to create an information platform that can bring in massive volumes of this type of data and language models and make them available to the rest of the scientific community to help spur more progress. While there is no one ultimate aim for this type of study, Martin acknowledges that gaining a better understanding of cognition and applying that knowledge to develop practical applications that can aid people are two sides of the same coin. In the domains of machine learning, neurology, and cognition, such research and initiatives will definitely spark new debates. It will also have an impact on one of the most heated debates in the scientific community, whether or not the brain is an appropriate model for machine learning at all, and whether or not that matters. People debate in both directions. I believe neuroscience can occasionally act as a validation checkpoint. Are you on the right track, guys? Are you creating the correct sorts of language models, in this case? Or do they work in an entirely different way than the brain? Regardless, looking further into the brain to learn how it solves problems is a quest that should pique everyone's curiosity. Machine learning, it turns out, may be one of the most effective technologies available to assist us in this endeavor. For the time being, the AI has only been tested in a few scenarios. Because of its data-hungry nature, this AI can't yet be applied to all mathematical subjects. It is, nevertheless, energy-efficient in comparison to many machine learning algorithms, and can be operated on a laptop. And the mathematical community is unpretentiously accepting. So, what is your opinion on these researchers' opinion that using our current and future knowledge of neuroscience is a necessity to create artificial intelligences beyond what is currently being developed by the world's leading artificial intelligence companies? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.